Hi, Wackadoodle family. It's Pastor Tim. So I'm out with my beautiful daughter and two grandsons, and they're going on ministry calls with me. And one of those was the Crisis Pregnancy Center. I wish you could have seen Peter. I wanted to do a little video with him. He was so cute trying to take the check and the supplies and take it up. He likes, he's really into it. I love being able to include my family and even some of the church family in some of those ministry calls. Anyway, um, I want to answer this question about repentance because as we're out and about, just the two boys and I at one point, uh, a lady approached me who has seen this wackadoodle family channel and she didn't like that, by the way. It, it's okay. We take no offense. She came at me with Mark one fifteen. And I want to say this. It, you know, I, I do not have a problem trying to explain ourselves with based off the word of God. It's kind of like the video I did on Jeff Epstein who was arrested. It's a horrible situation. I'm thankful the truth is coming out. So... In that, I mentioned Bill Clinton, and to the sister who made the comment that I responded to, I'm not upset with you, but many have sent messages that are just full of hatred and vile. The one thing about the comment that the sister made and why I commented back, I had time as Peter was eating a snack, was that you said, I only showed one side of it. I didn't point out the other side so that I need to show the truth or something to that effect. I don't want to put words in your mouth. My point was in that video, I did mention the fact that Bill Clinton had close association. And in fact, President Trump, during his campaign at one of the debates, made a comment in reference that Bill Clinton is going to have a problem when information about the island or something to that effect comes out. He was talking about Jeff Epstein. I also said that many, that the elitist, globalist, Freemason, New World Order, Antichrist, Satanic, you guys get it, right? Are working together. I wasn't, I said many names are going to come out. The video was still truth. Just because I didn't mention that Donald Trump, they have a picture of him from years ago, standing by, by Jeffrey Epstein. There are a lot of people who had association with him, and I said that would come out. I also am not going to pretend to know what relationship Donald Trump, President Trump now, had with Jeffrey Epstein back then based on a photo. I don't know. Nor would I try to hide that fact. I wasn't withholding truth. I shared information that I felt was relevant at the time. The fact is we know that there were at least 20 flights where Bill Clinton took with Jeffrey Epstein on some of these escapades and other things, and some without Secret Service. We know this. This is fact. We know he was in close alignment. And, and so I was simply bringing out, more, I, I'm not going to repeat that video. It's this constant, no, you need to say this, you need to add this. Is it not truth? Because I didn't mention Kevin Spacey, who we know, an actor who also supposedly had close association. It's truth, just because I don't mention every person, don't know every person that Jeffrey Epstein had in relation. That was not the gist of the message. And if you want to know, brothers and sisters, go back and look at it. Well, the same thing happens in regard to the rage against the gospel of grace. Now, the ABCs of Salvation will be in the description. If you want to know more about the, the gospel of grace, I... I encourage you to look on this channel at the video, Faith Plus Nothing Equals Salvation and Eternal Security. But I want to answer the question because this woman who challenged me with Mark 115, and by the way, she hates me. She literally said, I hate you and wish you were dead. I mean, it, the vile, the, and I don't feel that about her. I pray for her. I believe she believes that I am the devil incarnate. I think she actually said something. No, no, no. She called me the Antichrist. So anyway, it was based off of this. Mark 1.15. And saying, the time is fulfilled 
and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That's what Jesus says. So he uses the word repent there. The word repent there. There are three different forms of repent in the Greek that have been used. One is a metamalomos. I hope I said that right. And that is in regard in the word of God where it says the gifts are without repentance. Okay, so that's a metamalomos. Then there is, and I know Sister Renee has taught on this in depth. Then there is metamalomai, which is that sorrow after we're saved. So, because I want to get back to the Mark 115, I'm going to give you deeper understanding. Metamalomai is after we're born again, we are saved and sealed. The ABCs, right? Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Believe on the redemptive work of Christ on the cross of Calvary for the remission of all your sins, past, present, and future. Again, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Romans 3, 23. Romans 6, 23. John 3, 16. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. I go over them on the other video. The ABCs. How is a person born again? Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior and believe on the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary with the shedding of his blood. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. As the scripture states, this is the gospel, brothers and sisters. As the scripture states, Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God made him who knew no sin to be sin that we might become the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That nanosecond you believe, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. That nanosecond you believed on him, you were saved and sealed. Holy Spirit indwelt you until the day of redemption. Again, you can look up that video. So you've got a metamalomos, which is in reference, repentance, to um, the gifts are without repentance. Then you've got metamalomai, which is that sorrow, that after we're saved, we are not saved by metamalomai, we're not kept saved by metamalomai. Once you're saved and sealed, once you're saved, you are saved and sealed until the day of redemption when you believe. Faith plus nothing equals salvation and eternal security. And I tried to share this with this lady. There are over, I know there are over 38 times in the Bible, there could be more, that God repented. Some of you are going, he just blasphemed the Lord. He's saying God had to repent from sin, turn from sin. No, see, that's the problem. That's not what it means. You have the ametamalamos, which is the gifts are without repentance. I know I've said this, but I want you to get this. Metamalo my, which is that sorrow that we feel because we are now indwelt by Holy Spirit and we recognize, like in 1 John 1, 9, which I preached on yesterday, um, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the efficacy of his grace, which we've already been saved by grace through faith. We are, when we believe, we are 100% justified, 100% positionally sanctified. We, sin can no longer be attributed to our account. It, it, it's impossible for the spiritual man who's alive in Christ to sin, for sin to be to our account. Now we have a carnal nature, a sin nature. That's temporal. But judicially, Christ's redemptive work on the cross at Calvary paid the debt for our sins once and for all. The temporal, our sanctification is also experiential or progressive. That's our Christ-like character. We want to honor God. The chapter 1 John, it wasn't about confessing unto salvation. It's after you're saved because you want close fellowship with him. It's about our growth in him. We're already saved. You didn't become unsaved. So metamalomai, that sorrow, when we say we're sorry, when we recognize we've done something and we repent our metamalomai, we're already saved. We're not saved by that nor kept by that. 
we want to do that because we love God and we want to honor him and be in close fellowship with him. But you're still his child. You're still a child of God, therefore an heir of God and a co-heir with Christ Jesus. So in this Mark 1.15, the word repent and be saved or repentance unto salvation really is that it's metanoia, metanoia. And it means a change of mind. I am no longer, I'm no longer trusting in my own righteousness, my own works, anything I could do. I'm placing all my trust on the fact that God the Son, because we believe in an eternally self-existent God in the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God the Son, always having existed, left glory, laid down his glory, was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh, lived a perfect life, never sinned. That's why he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He shed his precious blood to pay the debt for my sin, to tell us die once and for all. It was perfect, whole, complete. Paid in full. That's that's what we're talking about when we talk about Christ paying the sin debt. And metanoia is when we are saved by grace through faith. We're no longer trusting in our own works righteousness. We're no longer trusting in the law. We're no longer trusting in anything our, except our faith. Say by grace through faith. In the grace of God. By faith. In the grace of God. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. We are trusting all sufficient. It's secure. Our eternal security. When we place... It's grace through faith, brothers and sisters. And what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. He conquered hell, death, and the grave. I think I said already, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, as the scripture states, Christ died for our sins. He was buried and on the third day rose from the dead. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes and is justified. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That nanosecond, you believed on the redemptive work. He is our propiti propitiation. He, he, it was substitutionary atonement. Jesus shed his blood. He became sin. Our sin was imputed to him. His righteousness imputed to us to pay the debt for our sins once and for all. Metanoia, repentance unto salvation. Metanoia is I'm changing my mind. I'm not trusting in myself, my own works righteousness, not in the law, not in anything except the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross at Calvary. In that grace of God, that's all I'm placing my trust in. It's all sufficient once and for all, past, present, and future. Praise God, glory to God. I am saved and sealed until the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit indwells me. So that's metanoia, a change of mind. Then meta malami is after being a believer. I recognize I've done something. And when we do, Holy Spirit doesn't condemn us, doesn't convict us in sin. It's a conviction to righteousness. He's telling us God has better for you. Think on these things. See yourself the way God sees you. You are a child of God, an heir of God, a co-heir with Christ Jesus. Christ is the head, we are the body, therefore all power, dominion, rule, and authority is under our feet, and we're seated with him in the heavenlies. We're still going to have that battle, but sin can no longer be attributed to our account. We are justified 100%, 100% positionally sanctified. Now our sanctification is also experiential or progressive. That's where grown in Christ-like character. And one day we're going to get our glorification, oh praise God, when the rapture happens. So that's metanoia, a change of mind. So I've given you the three types. So I tried to share with this woman. Now I want to give you that Mark 115. I'm going to say it again and give you more definition from the word. From my notes. And by the way, for those who would argue with me and say, clearly God did not repent. There's, I know of at least 38. There's probably more verses. But Genesis 6.6. And it repented 
the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. A God is holy and perfect and righteous, and it repented. What does that mean? God changed his mind that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him. Jeremiah 26, 13. Therefore, now amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will repent him of the evil that he hath pronounced against you. In other words, God's telling them, now amend your ways, and when you do that, I will repent. I will change my mind because of the evil that I have pronounced against you. Do you see? It's metanoia. It's a change of mind. So this lady believes... Now, I want to go into detail. So in this, Mark 1.15, I'm going to say it again and go, because this is like a little mini Bible study. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Mark here skips over the Lord's Judean ministry, which you'll find in John chapter 1, verse 14, to John chapter 4, verse 54. So he skips over that, and he begins with the great Galilean ministry, a period of one year and nine months. Then he deals briefly with the latter part of the Perean ministry before moving on to the last week in Jerusalem. So Jesus here came to Galilee preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. And his specific message was, and I want to give you three points. One, the time was fulfilled. According to the prophetic timetable, a date had been fixed for the public appearance of the king. It had now arrived. Secondly, the kingdom of God was at hand. The king was presented and was marking a bona fide offer of the kingdom to the nation of Israel. To the nation of Israel. Again, I say this all the time. All of the Bible is for the believer, not all of the Bible is about the believer. The kingdom was at hand in the sense that that the king had appeared on the scene and the king was presented and was mark, marking a bona fide offer of the kingdom to the nation of Israel. And third, men were called on to repent and believe the gospel. Repent, change their mind, and believe the gospel. In order to be eligible to enter the kingdom, they had to do an about face regarding change of mind regarding sin being justified by how was sin justified by the law and believing the good news concerning the Lord Jesus. And so there are different messages. Now, I, I've said this all the time. Yes, we want to know about Jesus' earthly ministry. You want to know about the mysterion, the mystery, the, the body of Christ. We are the ecclesia, the called out ones. You need to read the Pauline epistles. You need to read those letters. Ephesians is a great place to go. All of the Bible, all of the Bible is God breathed. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And good. It's it has no error. It is infallible. It is oh, it's it's amazing. From cover to cover, always pointing toward men being justified by faith. I've done videos on that. Always pointing toward Mashiach. Always. There's types, patterns, and foreshadows in the Old Testament. There are things that are addressed specifically to the Jewish people, specifically to the nation of Israel. We are now in the period of grace. This is the gospel that Paul brought. 1 Corinthians, I already said it, 15, 1-4. As the scripture states, Christ died for our sins, was buried... And on the third day rose from the dead, as the scripture teaches us, as it states. He says in Galatians 1.89, if anyone teaches or preaches a gospel other than that, delivered that 1 Corinthians 15.1-4, that person, even an angel from heaven, is accursed. Mixing law plus grace is not salvation. And people continue to try to do that. Repentance unto salvation 
Metanoia is a change of mind. Admit your sinner in need of a Savior. Believe on the redemptive work of Christ on the cross of Calvary to pay the debt. It was once for all, all sufficient for our past, present, and future sins. And that nanosecond you will be saved. And then, of course, to see, you're going to confess the Lord or call on the name of the Lord. That's going to come. And then the metamoyami that after you're a Christian... Our reasonable service. Listen, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, the free gift of salvation. How do we get that? We believe. We believe on the Son of God, who paid the debt with the shedding of his precious blood. It never gets old, does it? For the remission of our sins, all our sins. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are created in his workmanship unto good works, which he prepared beforehand. So yes, we want to do those good works. We are not saved by works. We are not kept saved by works. We are saved for works. That has to do with our rewards. I believe that. That's the doctrine of rewards is in the word of God. Absolutely. That refers to our service. That refers to our fellowship. That refers to our maturity, our discipleship. Absolutely. But we are already saved. We are already saved. I hope that answers the question. So I shared the definitions of metanoia with this lady. She was having no part of it. You want to talk about what the Bible talks about? A willful sin? A willful rejection of the redemptive work? She's heard the truth. She goes to church. I'm not sure what kind of church, but she's heard the truth and she is railing against. Look at what she's railing against. She's not railing against me. I just brought the word of God. People get mad. They, people get really angry that I quote Ephesians 2, 8, 9 all the time. They mock me for it. They say, all he knows is that one verse in John three sixteen. Well, that's not true. I know a lot of verses, but that's not the point. It, listen, that negates the power of for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. Wow. Romans 10, 13. All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The thief on the cross believed on the Son of God. And Jesus said, you'll be with me in paradise. I actually had a chance. I said to this woman, so how did you get saved? She said, I confessed every sin. You confessed every sin. It was really interesting because when I was, that's not what repentance unto salvation means. Repent and believe. That's not what it means. It means a change of mind. You come to Jesus just as you are. If you're watching this, and you say, I want to know how I can be saved. Come to Jesus as you are. Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior and believe that Jesus always having existed, always being God, laid down glory, was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh, lived a perfect life. Therefore, he could be the one, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. He who knew no sin, never having sinned, became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Again, if you don't know all that, go to the video, Faith Plus Nothing Equals Salvation and Eternal Security. I go into that. Well, she said, I confessed all my sins. So I said to my daughter, Allie, I said, okay, every time I have a thought that is not, you know, to God's moral standard. And how many thoughts can we have that meet God's moral standard of perfection? I am so thankful for the blood of Jesus that paid the debt for my sins once and for all. And the fact that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I kept saying, Oh, Allie, I just had another one. It's like, okay, so do we confess our sins after we're saved? You bet we do when we recognize it. But, oh, with the, I'm going to have 70,000 thoughts today. And I tried to share with this lady, and she was not having it. She said, and I surrendered my entire life, <clears throat> and I live only for Jesus. I don't even want to sin. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Do you sin? She said, really, I don't. I could. She said, I know we have a, a sin nature, but really I don't. And I thought, wow, there's scriptures about this. Read the, I encourage her. I said, I want to encourage you to read 
1 John. Start with chapter 1, verse 1, and keep reading. I, there was no way I was getting through to her. So I wanted you to be aware of what repentance is. If you want to know what's over the target right now, be a grace preacher. Be someone who teaches the gospel of grace. We get accused of license to sin. And we're not saying that at all. We're saying we trust the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary to sufficiently pay the debt for all our sins, <clears throat> past, present, and future, once and for all. And because we are saved people and dwelt with Holy Spirit, we want to honor God. We want to live according to his standards. That impacts our testimony, our living testimony, but it can't take our salvation away. We are not saved by works. We are not kept saved by works. We are saved for works. And people will say, well, repentance isn't works. What are you repenting from then? A violation of the law, a violation of God's moral standards? That's a work. Come on. We are saved by faith, by grace through faith. Period. Now, because we are, we want to honor God with the way we live our lives. Well, brothers and sisters, again, I, that's a little mini Bible study. I want you to know I prayed for that lady. I hold no offense. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May you have an awesome rest of your day. Look up because our redemption draws nigh. Occupy and redeem the time. And remember this, no matter what you're facing, Philippians 4.13, the Apostle Paul said that he knew what it was to have plenty. He knew what it was to have lack. No matter what you're going through, you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. And remember this also, you are a child of God. If a child, then an heir of God and a co-heir with Christ Jesus. And the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead abides in you. Maranatha.